Hi, everybody. This is episode seven of Zenforo Insights. Today, we're going to talk about communicating with your users. So some topics we'll be covering will be the notices system, alerts, uh, an app integration, hitting threads, pi private conversations, and quite a bit more. Today, we have with us here with Zenforo. Hey, yeah. Mike with Audentio. Oh, hello. Uh, me with Audentio and Alex with Audentio. Hey. Um, and Alex is a community strategist with us, so she will be able to really have a lot of insight on communicating. Uh, today, we are going to cover the following. So an introduction, we have talking points, and we have question and answer. Um, if you do have a question, if you want to just throw it in Q&A whenever you would like, that would be wonderful. Um, so when we kind of prepped for this, Alex and, um, well, all of us kind of discussed the benefits of communicating with your users and kind of why, why we wanted to do this episode. Could you guys help kind of quickly summarize the purpose of this video and what, what is the benefit of being communicative with your users? Um, yeah, I can start with that. So at or you should be communicating with your users before any major event happens on the site, just because it limits toxicity in your users, like your users will be frustrated if you introduce a new feature or have an event that they don't know about. So you need to communicate with them beforehand to not cause any frustration. And also, if you were adding a new feature, involving them in that process can go a long way because it can help get those users on your side and make the rollout a lot easier. And I think also um, a good communication strategy is simply to, um, I guess, reach people where they're at um, as well. Um, and I think also, people think of maybe communicating as just email, right? You can use your platform as a means to communicate with your users on, uh, there's a many many different formats within Zen for many different structures within Zen for, uh, that allow that, um, which I think we're gonna, we're gonna- We're gonna demo that in a little while, yeah. Awesome. Um, so let's dive into the different strategies. Um, we have several talking points today, I think divided across two different <clears throat> slides, but let's start with topics that you actually want to discuss with your users, some good starting points there. Um, so I thought before we talked about how to communicate with your users, we should talk about what to communicate with them. Um, I don't have an exhaustive list, of course, because your communities, every community is different, but on a basic level, you should communicate software and feature changes, any site downtime, um, changes to systems, especially those involving money on your site, um, contests and events, or um, new additions to the team. So it's obviously not an exhaustive list, but it should really drive home the point that if you are making any major changes or you're having an event, it needs to be communicated to your users beforehand. Nice. Yeah, and I think it kind of somewhat goes without saying, but I think um, you know one of the biggest um, you know uh, issues that I see with uh, communities that trend towards you know toxicity or or your users start to feel a certain way on your platform, it may just be that you're making too many decisions without them, right? Because um, I think it's so easy to over time at least, think of your community as a, it can become a, a little bit faceless, especially if you yourself as a community manager, as a site owner, get a little busy for a while, right? Family life happens or, uh, you know, business uh, takes a downturn or some uh, so something happens in your life where maybe you have to take a step back from the community for a while. Sometimes you will find that, you know, you it's almost like a relationship, you, your community managers, and the site as a whole. And so, uh, you know, a trend I see quite a bit is that whenever that happens, be that just burnout or whatever, um, communities can start to tend towards talk because essentially it's almost like you're just not keeping up with the, with the relationship. And people pick up on that. They have a very tuned 
for when leadership or when uh, um, you know the 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 community uh, leadership team or, or moderator uh, take a step back or stop communicating. And yeah, yeah, that is kind of the critical point. Oh, go ahead. Um, yeah, I was, I was just going to pick up on that and say that um, the, the the work never ends with with running community. Never take your community as a given. Um, because the, the minute you start doing that and you expect it to just run with, uh, with no interaction from you, no, uh, no help, no guidance, then it, it will tend toward toxicity because that's just what the internet does. So it needs constant care and attention, constant communication in order to, to keep that thing running in a healthy state. Yeah. It's kind of like, <clears throat> imagine any of you out there who might have, you know, I don't know, he's with friends or family, you know, things, drama happens, right? Now imagine that, and you talk with these people. Now imagine you don't talk with that person for, for weeks, months, maybe even I've seen years. Um, it kind of is no wonder why the community leaders, you know, active members in your community will begin to almost, um, I don't know what the word is, but maybe like, um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll feel a particular way towards the leadership team. They'll feel like you should be doing something and there'll be resentment, I guess is maybe a good word because, you know, some of these people on your platform, they want to see it grow themselves, right? They want, they've contributed. So um, I think what we want to cover today, at least, at least in part, at least a little bit is I guess how convenient it is to actually communicate, right? It isn't really all that bad. It's something that, you know, as Kira mentioned, you, the work will never stop, but um, with the notices system, in fact, there are ways that you set up advanced uh, notices and things like that, where um, you know you can make it easier on yourself. Right. I mean, I've um, I, I publicize these these webinars with a notice that I pop up on the on the day of going live, um, and uh, when we start to demo the notice system in a minute, then uh, you, you can see how you can tailor those notices to a particular subset of users. Um, it's a very powerful system. I think our third topic on talking points on this screen is alerts. Or are we wanting to demo now? Well, I think what we could briefly talk about is the different methodologies that Zenfro supports. And not even just Zenfro, but even just in general. But I think Zenfro covers all the major ones. The ones that you um segment users, like Kier mentioned, um, which we call like a uh, user criteria. Um, I think the list, I don't know if we have a list to pull up Megan, but I can just kind of from memories, you know, there's, there's the private mess system. There's the alert system. There's the notices system. There's of course, regular threads. You can sticky a thread. Um, you, uh, there's article type uh, components. There's certain widgets you can use. Um, there's an email system, of course. Um, and, you know, we can talk about other methodologies that you can be employing that maybe can integrate with Zenfro, things like push notifications or even SMS integrations. But those are some of the main ones, at least. I mean, there's, there's, there's obviously many ways. I guess you can send your pigeon too, but uh, you just need an add-on for that. Should we do maybe a quick, quick demo of the, some of these systems? I can probably demo that real quick. Let me get a, let me, let me get a quick uh, demo up myself. Okay. Um, before we dive into that, can I also talk about more of how you should communicate with your users? Because I wanted to talk about um, maybe tone and consistency, because no matter what your community members are doing, you need to always maintain a supportive and friendly tone in your methods, because as leader of the community, you can really also be the leader of a toxic environment and drive users away from your site. Mm -hmm. And when you're dealing with your community members, you also need to have clear guidance so that no one is ever surprised when they're in violation of the rules and you need to take consistent access or consistent action against users. So no one should ever, ever feel targeted and the rules should be clearly outlined. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, I think also not saying anything actually thing sometimes right like we kind of been talking about so if you you know ban users without communicating that they could be banned for example there is a um or or maybe um infraction you know giving someone an infraction point or or uh, temporarily banning them 
or even just telling them off for something that you never communicated prior sets kind of a precedent and trust trust is something that i think everyone if the way i look at it is they kind of have like a little bit of a meter in their head for you and depending on things you say and do or whatever that meter can begin to decline or go up so um, is there's never just one thing, but it's a it's a you know it's a, it's 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 the summation of many different little parts and and uh, different things you might say and do that of course will um, uh, will affect your users' trust in, in 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 you. So again, the more you can do to prepare for um, you know prepare prepare for tough situations like having a really good rules guidelines and. And um, you know, clearly communicating that to new members, for example, so they know where where to go, they know where to learn about those rules. Um, you're going to keep higher trust with your with your audience. I think I can probably demo something really quickly, unless Kira, you'd like to. to I I am back. I'm hopeful that the connection will stay stable enough for me to uh, actually do a presentation. And uh, all right, fingers crossed. I think we're at that point. So whenever you're ready, but. Um, yeah, I think um, as as Kier sets that up, I think, like I said, covering uh, the wide variety of different you know native tools in Zenfro, but also you know it's worth noting that if there are, is a particular engagement tool that you like to use, like Salesforce or um, I guess you know uh, uh, Mailchimp or HubSpot or any of those types, of tools, um, you can always integrate those with Zenfro. Zenfro also has obviously. Um, as many know, an extensive uh, third-party integration uh, add-ons uh, tool built right into the core for extending features in that way. So I've got uh, three users logged in here, and uh, we're going to take a look at the notices system first. And um, you can see that I've got three of these notices uh, set up already, um, but disabled. So let's just go and um, turn this one on. And I've given it a title, but that's that's only for the purposes of uh, identifying it for the admin. Um, this is the important bit, and you can use uh, full-fledged HTML there. Um, but it's also nice to see that there are some tokens you can use. So I can say, hey, name, and uh, that will appear as a personalized message for uh, whoever is logged in at the, at the moment. Um, let's just scroll down through here and say, I'll show the visitor's avatar, and I'll just leave it at primary styling. And I'm going to use it as a block type notice. And when I save that out and uh, take a look at it as this user, then ooh, let's actually turn it on first. Then that appears at the top here, and the, uh, the link works properly. But that's not the only kind of notice that you can use. Um, so let's um, just turn these ones on too and uh, go see what they are. So this one is also a block. Um, so with all the three of those enabled, you're going to get this big block of, of three stack notices at the top, which is um, OK, I guess, if you uh, wanted to have that many. Um, and of course, your users can dismiss those if you've uh, allowed them to. But if you hadn't allowed them to dismiss them and you've just got this big stack, then it might be better to change them into scrolling notices. So let's go and change them all into scrolling. And what this is going to do is it's going to, instead of stacking them on top of each other, it's going to uh, turn them into a sort of a carousel thing. So when I load this again now, you'll see that there are three dots at the bottom, which is kind of a, a pattern that people understand is going to um, move them across. And, and if we just leave it to sit there, then over time, uh, those will scroll around as well just like that. There's two other kinds of notices. Um, let's go and uh, change those quickly. We've got um, a floating notice uh, with additional um, uh, parameters for that. So you can actually have a floating notice that will automatically dismiss itself uh, by setting a duration in milliseconds there. But let's take a look at what that does. So we've now got our um, scrolling notices at the top. And you can see that we've got this uh, floating one at the down at the bottom here. And the final kind is uh, let's use this one and change it to a fixed notice. And that will now appear fixed to the bottom of the page like that. Now, Mike already mentioned that you can target these notices. And uh, one that I've already set as targeted is this one called set an avatar. And what it does is it says, hey, whatever your name is, why not 
give you take a few moments to uh, give yourself an avatar image, and it actually sets up the uh, URL and uh, an overlay to allow the user to get instant access to the avatar system. Um, but we're, none of these users are seeing this notice because they've all got avatars. If I have a look into the user criteria system, you can see that I've targeted only users who have no avatar. So if I were to come into this user here and uh, go and clear his avatar, no, let's not do that. Let's clear, delete the avatar. There we go. Then as soon as I load a new page, then here we are. Why not take a moment to give yourself a new avatar image? And there we go. Now we can uh, uh, open that up and get the full uh, access to the entire system. So that's a that's a brief look at the notices system. Uh, what should we look at next? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> what I'd love to see here quickly is maybe uh, some of those criteria um, that we could be using. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tr I'll try to come up with some examples maybe as we go. Like, so <clears throat> um, what what Kier did here is he tabbed over. You had the notice options, and now you're on user criteria, um, and, and there's a pretty you know, decent sized list of different ways you can target. And some of my favorite ones might be things like, um, you know, user is a guest, right? Um, let's say you migrated from another platform and uh, you needed to notify them that all passwords have been reset because maybe something with the data migration required that you can then target all those users and tell them, hey, make sure you reset your password before logging in. Um, and that could be a notice that they see. In fact, they can even see that just on the uh, the login and register pages if you wanted, I think under page criteria. No, right, yeah. You can just go and uh, set it to uh, to only happen in a particular controller and class if you want to get into that. You could set yep. it to only appear within a particular node. Uh, so if you had a welcome forum, for example, you could have a notice that appeared in there. Yeah, that's, that. that's the kind of thing you could set up. Yeah, so um, uh, some of my other favorite ones might be uh, yeah, like connected accounts, you know, for example, if you wanted people to to connect, um, you know, some OAuth or maybe something happened where you're using older OAuth and that uh, protocol or that uh, situation isn't working anymore, you could let people know. Uh, my favorite of all these is the user groups, though, uh, because uh, I'm a big fan of kind of segmenting users based on their different, um, you know, their different uh, behaviors. So maybe uh, what I like to do is I like to have a user group for kind of my brand new members. I like to have a user group for kind of your regular members. I like to have a user group for uh, you know the users that are very active and most vocal in the community. And I have others too. Um, so maybe I don't want to promote a user upgrade right now to new members, but I don't mind with my standard users and my um, my more vocal users. Or maybe I'm promoting a beta team, but I don't really want everybody to know about it. Um, it's a little secretive. Maybe I only want to target my um, my most uh, vocal and supportive uh, users. Or um, you know any number of reasons why you, you might want to target someone based on you know some type of user group. Maybe there's a particular product you're selling, and you only want people who haven't bought that to see that notification. If you maybe had a user group where you organize those users into a group of client and not client, let's just say, you could show a notice targeting specifically not your clients, so they see a special you know, one motion or, or, or whatever you might want to use that for. Um, and down here, yeah, we have uh, lots of different scalers, um, you know, different things that uh, happen at different, um, I guess, uh, points in the lifespan of the user. So maybe, for example, we want to know, um, or we, we, we want to incentivize users with a, maybe even just thank you if they have answered uh, 10 questions, right? Um, you could even use the notices system just for that. Or, um, yeah, go ahead, Kier. So I was just going to say that um, the, the criteria system that we have here for notices um, is replicated across multiple different systems in Senforo, uh, and the most important of which being user group promotions. So if you have a particular uh, set of criteria that you use a lot, like a uh, user has posted no more than 15 messages, for example, rather than setting that up on multiple notices, use a user group through user group promotions, and, and then you've got it as a, a single click setup. 
Yeah, like I said, I think uh, I've said this in previous episodes, but like my favorite feature is that um, user promotion system um, because you can set up criteria and 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 segment your users, right? I mean, and and I think every community manager needs some some way to um, yeah to group the users, especially if you have a massive community with hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of users or more. Um, segmenting your users for for targeted engagement is one of the most valuable things you could be doing on your community. Yeah, and I think here's uh, here's showing that here now where you can uh, you can add a promotion here. So yeah, you can see that this uh, the criteria system that we we get uh, when you're setting up a user promotion is is the same system as you have um, for for setting up notices. The only difference would be. Uh, that you don't have the page level criteria that you had uh, when we were working with notices, because there's there's no concept of a user belonging to a particular page. That's that's very much something that happens while they're browsing. Yep, and I I probably gave enough examples. I'm not sure, but yeah, I think showing the page criteria might be useful as well, or even user field criteria. That's kind of an interesting other extension of user criteria. So. Mm -hmm. So any custom fields that you set up will automatically add themselves to the uh, user field criteria um, system. I, I think we've covered um, user fields in a previous episode. And if not, then we probably should at some point in the future. Um, but just in case we haven't, the user field system is the ability to, to, to track and store particular data for your users um, that is custom towards your community. So uh, not everyone is going to need to know what kind of car you drive, but if that's the kind of forum that you run, then why not create a, a custom user field criteria, a custom user field that stores that? And then you can make it searchable and you can uh, apply it to the criteria system. The notices could also be really important for onboarding your users. So mm -hmm. say you could use the user group, user criteria, then based on that, show a specific notice um, to a help page and onboard each specific group of users. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So should we move on to alerts or should we, have, have we got more to talk about on, um, on notices? I mean, I think we could probably, as you can see, spend a good half hour at least on notices. <laughs> we and really I, could, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're they're one of my favorite features. That's why we started with them. But between notices and the user criteria and user promotion system, you have more engagement opportunity than the vast majority of engagement platforms at all. Um, I mean, there's so many uh, different options and ways you can be setting up notices in advance for birthdays and holidays and mm -hmm. upcoming events and whatever else could happen. Um, when they're in a when they reach a particular state or user group or whatever that might be, um, and so you can almost plan it out in like a in a in a document, Word or Google Docs or whatever, and figure out all the different journeys that your users can go through and what you might want to communicate with them along that way, and you can organize that entire ecosystem into the Zenfero uh, notices system and the other systems which we'll talk about here. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I think that the um, the actual name of the system uh, came about from. Its, its original purpose, but as it's as it's extended and, and gained criteria and things, it's become so much more than just a notice system. Uh, it, it is a, a generic user segmentation messaging system. Um, so perhaps we need to rename it to uh, to reflect that at some point. Let's talk about alerts. So um, there are system level alerts that happen whenever something happens that um, uh, is either part of, a, of an event that you've subscribed to, like you followed a particular person, um, and it will appear in the alert menu up here. But as an administrator, you also have the ability to direct alerts um, to your users um, in, in, an, in a very similar way to notices, but I guess maybe it's a little less uh, in your face. So maybe something that is, um, slightly of, of, of lower priority might might be a good candidate for the alert system. Um, but let's go and take a look at how to actually do it. Uh, the first thing we need to set up is um, who the alert is going to be sent from. And then you'd expect that each alert would have something that uh, an, an action, uh, so a link maybe. So I think I've got one set up here, and it's just going to be um, my profile page and it's going to be a really um, rubbishy alert that says uh, hey and let's use that name token again and you can see that the tokens down here are name and id and link and we can also use phrases uh, which i'm not going to go into here but um, 
you can actually make your uh, your notices language independent if that was important for your particular community. Uh, come take a look at, and then we'll put the link, and the link is going to be comprised of the URL and the text, which is all represented by this this one token here. So. Uh, Right, there's a fantastic alert there. And then we've got that um, that ever familiar user criteria system. So I can actually choose who I want to send this alert to and, and uh, segment your users in the same way as we've been talking about with notices. Um, so again, we could uh, send it to a particular user group, um, which also can use um, segmentation and, and uh, selection by virtue of being linked in with user group promotions. Um, and then you've got all the other things like uh, the user hasn't visited since, or, or the user's got a certain count of messages, or the user is in a particular state, and all of this kind of stuff. Um, so rather than setting all that up, let's just actually see what this is going to do. So we'll hit proceed on that. We can view the full list of users that is going to match the criteria, which is really useful. Um, if before you spam your entire user base, you could just open this up and say, uh, right, well, it's going to send that to these users, uh, which is really useful in case you find that actually you're about to send an alert to 25 million users. Yeah, um, how many of us have done that before, right? Must send an <laughs> email or something to the wrong group. So getting this little notification has come in handy for me, to say the least. <laughs> uh, so then we can send a test, which uh, I believe will uh, send it to just myself. Is that right, Mike? <laughs> Let's take a look. So here we are. Oh, I've got a notification, and uh, that is oh, that's the notice. So here's the notification, and uh, so I've tested it by just sending it to myself. But this user has not received anything. So now we can come back into here, and uh, if we're happy with everything, then we'll hit send, and uh, it tells me how many it's sent to. And as soon as we open a new page, then we can see that that alert has popped in. And if I click anywhere in there, then I get directed to the uh, place that was um, directed as part of the URL. I think this integrates with the the the, the web app as well. Um, and if you have other integrations like that, this could send the the push notification that way as well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this might be a silly question, but when that sends, is it sending? It doesn't notify like all ten users of all ten people who it's been sent to, right? Like it's not like a group message. No, you that's there's a separate thing for for group messages. Okay, I just wanted to make like I have yeah, just to make sure. Yeah, I I think it's one of those things that, um, you know, again, not a not a whole lot of people take advantage of because I think you kind of have so many choices that messaging users with like a private group message, for example, I think is what other platforms kind of expect you to do, like, you know, group group messages, DMs, you know, iMessage and such. Um, on your social platform, you have so many other options that you don't even have to do that. You can use threads, alerts like you just shown, you can just email. But yes, indeed, you can send, you know, direct messages to users. So I think the, uh, the notice system and the alert system are useful when um, you don't really want any kind of response from your users. You just want them to do a particular thing that you're directing them to do. Whereas for something like um, onboarding a user and saying, welcome, uh, come take a look, and is there anything we can help you with? Then that 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 fits a, a direct message much more than, than an alert or a notice. Yeah, absolutely. I think things like um, a payment, maybe, maybe a subscription didn't go through. Uh, setting a private or a, a group message for that with a, with your admin or community manager. So that way they can one-on-one -on -one fix that issue. I think it makes a lot of sense because I think on a lot of platforms, you'll just get an email, a no reply email nonetheless, that mm -hmm. says, oh, your payment didn't go through. Whereas maybe on Zenfro, you do want a response to that. It's how you make your money, right? So in, in, in some communities at least. So maybe sending a group message when that happens, so that way they can just simply reply right there and get it resolved. Um, that's why that from user, you want to put... Uh, maybe who handles that right now? Mm -hmm. Who handles uh, that situation? Uh, so and as we're here, we might as well take a quick look at that. Um, we've got the the email option, and uh, you can set the reply email. Um, so you you could have this um, direct you back to to maybe your personal email or a, a system that's going to collect up replies to this particular email, um, and then. 
once again, you've got the user criteria systems, so you can build up a great big list of, of who exactly you want to target with this email. Uh, you can even have it just generate a list of email addresses. So if you wanted to farm that off to MailChimp or, or some other uh, mass email sender, you don't have to do it all through the, uh, the Zenforo system. You can just get a list of email addresses um, using the criteria system, um, which can be very powerful. Uh, so that's, that's email. Um, and there's also message users, um, which is perhaps the most uh, intimate of the, the messaging options where you're going to create a, a personal conversation with the targeted users um, and you can invite multiple people to the same conversation and and have all sorts of uh, things like i mean you could you could allow the conversation to be locked if you really wanted to although that seems slightly pointless um, and again you've got that whole criteria system so all of this stuff um, allows you to have uh, as much flexibility as you could ever want to communicate with your users yeah, and you can also set it so that it'll automatically send, I believe it's an options user registration, so that users will automatically receive a message when they become a member of the site. Um, so that's a good way to introduce users and you won't have to like be manually messaging them every time a new user enters the site. Let's see if I could type that properly. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. <laughs> Should we go find it? Sure. User registration options. Start welcome conversation on registration. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, this is super value, especially if you are, um, you know, expecting a response from people or you just like your mentioned, kind of want to have that one on one time with new users, right? They're going to be able to um, kind of ask quick questions and such. And uh, if you don't want them to ask quick questions, then of course don't do this, right? But uh, you can even lock the conversation so that way it's more of just a, it feels personable, kind of like sending a, you know, a, a thank you postcard or whatever with no return address, but mm -hmm. um, I'm just kidding. But yeah, there's, it, it just depends on your, it depends on your use case. Every, every community has, a, you know, their own nuances. You will have yours. Um, and I think the point is just a, a lot of different options here. Um, and I think one other system, if we go back to the communication tab, uh, uh, we can show um, forcing uh, privacy policy terms and rules uh, agreement, which mm -hmm. is a, a nice feature. I think that's in, was that in two? I don't remember, but um, we've used this quite a bit. I, th I think, I feel like that may have come about in 2.1, um, but no, I couldn't be entirely wrong. Um, but yeah, if if uh, if you do change your um, your terms and rules, then it's useful to uh, to force people to to go and see that before they do anything else. Uh, and this is a tool to allow that. Yep. So um, if you have changed your different you know different policies or rules, um, I think what this will do is when you when you it, it, when you click save, when everybody visits the platform again, they'll have to they'll see a notice that that states that the um, you know, the terms uh, or privacy policy has been updated. Yep. There we go. So I've just hit save on that with uh, no additional information. And now uh, it doesn't matter where I try and go on here. Uh, it's not going to let me uh, do anything until I've accepted the um, terms and rules. So I'll hit accept on that. And now I'm back to uh, normal status. Yep. And that's, I guess, a good way to, you know, force communication when it matters, when there's something mm -hmm. legal or Maybe when there was a, a, a situation, a, you know, dramatic situation or security related situation, um, sometimes that can be important. Um, so, yeah, I think um, we covered, you know, quite a bit of of the different methods. And I think another, you know, very useful method is, of course, just traditional threads, right? Uh, you can use just regular conversation, regular threads, regular discussions. You can stick them. And that way, uh, depending on, and, and you can stick threads on each individual forum uh, that you're in. So maybe you have in the, um, maybe you have a, an introductions forum. Maybe you say, hey, feel free to create a thread. We want to know, you know, your, your name, uh, where you come from and why you're here maybe. And that way everybody kind of understands at least kind of the standard format for that thread. Or maybe you have a uh, a marketplace forum, you know, a buy sell trade forum, or a place where you want people to, you know, trade and buy and sell from each other. Um, you probably want to have specific rules just for that area. 
So having a thread and then sticking it to the top of the site um, or the, the top of that page will at least serve as a, a constant reminder whenever somebody visits um, that uh, thread uh, for rules of conduct. And again, you can use notices and, and alerts and, or I'm sorry, uh, notices and, and um, uh, um, well, I guess, yeah, having, having, having notices be them uh, sticky floating or at the top for just that note as well. You can, there's a, there's a lot of different options. Again, just choose the one that's, that's best for you. And you also want to consider um, pinning threads will bring attention to that thread, but if you have too many, it may have the opposite effect because at that point, no one is going to be paying attention to them. If you have like an entire page just of pin threads, so you need to make sure that you are only pinning threads that are very important and that you're regularly cleaning them out so that they're up to date. I would say um, this isn't a hard rule, but you should have rules and guidelines as things that are consistently pinned the whole time and then continue rotating out the other ones. I've never heard anyone say that they should be regularly cleaned out. And I think that's like super important to note because I've been to so many communities where like irrelevant things, like very old irrelevant things are pinned. As an administrator, it's it's useful to, uh, let's let's go and um, actually do this while we're here. If you go to, um, I think it's in under preferences, um, before you go and uh, start setting up a whole bunch of, of notices, hit that restore dismissed notice button because you may be surprised that you actually have a load of notices um, lying around from from uh, from previous occasions, and using that option to uh, to undismiss them allows you to see what a an unregistered user is going to see, uh, which can be really useful um, to avoid that situation where you end up with uh, ten stacked notices at the top of the forum, which is really off putting. Can you uh, uh, you can log in as a user as well. Um... I can't remember if that's actually a stock or not. There's a free add-on in the uh, marketplace for that, but if there's not, but you can always log in as a new member or particular user group to test some of these things as well. Mm -hmm. So you can get it kind of from from that user's perspective, uh, what they're going to read and see. Um, just in case, just as a sanity test, of course. I mean, the, the easiest way, of course, is to just say uh, that you want a new private window and uh, and just go directly to there, and then it will um, it will show you the the guest view. Uh, and uh, where do we need to go? Uh, so we can see that we've got three notices showing up here um, for for guest users. Um, I was curious which, I guess, system or area would surveying your users fit in, Alex, because you were talking about that last time. Is that something that you do as like a notice or is that something you do as like a direct message how do you handle those um i typically do it as a notice because we'll create a form outside of the community so i'll create a thread make it sticky and then i'll create a notice to grab users attention for it um the main point of surveying the users is um to make sure that they feel like they're part of the community to make sure that we are valuing their feedback and all of their suggestions um, so it's just a time for, you know, all of their maybe with the community or different features they want to see to be heard. Yeah, I mean, technically you could be using, you could be using the Zen for a poll system as Kira is showing here, because I believe you can tick off display votes publicly, right? And By so that way, off, yeah. yeah, and I think, um, uh, by doing that, you might be able to keep your, your results, uh, private. So if we created a, uh, a thread like this and then uh, go in here and sticky it and then grab hold of the, um, the link address, then we could go into the notice system and ask people to uh, fill in the survey here. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Something like that would do it. Yeah, and you can use HTML, right? Yep, there you go. And then I guess we'd uh, just not target that at all. And now when we load, oh, there we go, some uh, particularly special HTML there, but uh, now we've got it linked to our poll. And Very good. <laughs> having talked about not having stacks of notices. 
So, I mean, I think uh, we can go on and on about some of these features, but I think the general idea is is there. So I guess, Megan, do we have anything else that we can uh, go through here today or? Yes. Um, I'm going to share my screen to show the remainder of the talking points, if that's OK, Akir. Sure. Uh, just while we were um, having just pinned those two threads, Pinning threads is another thing that you need to keep a, an eye on because uh, there's there's nothing more off-putting and nothing that that nullifies the usefulness of pinned threads than having loads of them. If you have an entire page worth of pinned threads, which I've seen before, nobody ever reads them. They just go straight to page two where to, to where the uh, the new content. Yeah, and personally, I think a good rule here would be um, you know around one per forum or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, just something to state what's important and you know, special circumstances, sure. But for the most part, really, there doesn't seem to be a reason to have more than one. Cool. Um, we talked a little about surveying your users. Did we talk about MailChimp marketing lists? And is there anything that we want to touch on with that? Yeah, I think we did it a little bit. But you know, if you had, uh, Kier showed how you could uh, export a list of users um, such that you could import them, MailChimp and Constant Contact. They have an import page where you just can paste in a big, massive list of, of comma delimited or um, maybe a CSV of emails and users. And you can just copy and paste that right from Zenfor into a MailChimp or Constant Contact. But there are also MailChimp, Constant Contact, SunGrid, SES, and other integrations I think that you could be uh, adding to directly uh, take use uh, of those features. Um, and I think you can change the mail settings from the server as well um, to send from uh, some third party um, tr uh, transactional email service as well, which I don't think really covered, but is a little bit more technical. Mm -hmm. um, I could also talk about how, you know, the difference between a more automated email like Threadloom versus sending a newsletter through MailChimp. So MailChimp newsletters, we typically send them uh, every quarter and they're meant to be just a curated um, list of content from the community. Whereas Threadloom, it's basically something or even the system in Zenfro is meant to send a non-curated email of content to users in an attempt them back. Do you disagree with that, Mike? Well, I, th I think you can set up either of solutions to be a little bit more curated. Um, yes, but I think... I know in Zenfor you can set the um, categories, but can you set the type of content beyond that? I think wait, a newsletter is... Uh, the, it's called a... Is it Digest? I actually am not quite... Uh, I, I don't quite remember. Um, but I think it's new in 2.2, actually. It is. Really? It's uh, it's the activity summary, and it, it came about right. in 2.2. Um, it allows you to uh, use a, a criteria system of a sort um, to, to to set up multiple blocks of content, and each block can have its own criteria for, for pulling content. So you could have uh, a block that pulls the most recent threads from your new members forum, and then another block that has the um, the most popular threads across the entire board, and you can you can curate it in a in a after a fashion. I mean, it doesn't allow you to individually pick out um, particular threads, uh, although that's coming in the future. But what it does allow you to do is to to create uh, to curate the uh, the individual blocks that you're going to uh, to populate. Okay, then I would say maybe newsletter is an option you have content beyond the forum, say if your community creates articles, then this is a good way to combine all of those together in a single email that goes out to users. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, we already talked about pinned threads quite a bit. Is there anything else to touch on with that? No, I think we talked about most of these, these talking points at least for now. Okay. okay. I think that's it then. I mean, we didn't have any other talking points in terms of communicating. Unless yeah, I, I mean, think of. Yeah, I think it's just the general guiding principle of, you know, communicate all right. Um, and I think that'll keep uh, keep everybody happy and keep the community engaged. Uh, and I think what we're trying to highlight here today is just, you know, the you have quite a bit of power within the platform itself. Um, there's other things you could be utilizing, obviously, social media, uh, your own um, engagement softwares uh, that you might be using already. Um, but even just on platform here, there's... Uh, um, 
number of different uh, options for for communicating, planning for messages you might want to share. Um, you know, it all kind of works together. You want to segment your users. You want to use the alerts. You want to use notices. You want to use threads, um, and all of that stuff together will make for a really clear um, and easy to understand uh, platform. Everybody. Awesome. Um, I do have a lot of teaching analogies that I've thought of this whole time. Like basically the admin is like the teacher and they want to keep the class like not necessarily in line, but feeling respect heard so that they don't act out essentially. And I try, I was like, don't do a teaching analogy. So I tried to hold them in, but um, yeah, thank you guys for talking about all well, of this. Is there? Well, that's a, that's a good, that's a good point. Actually, I thought like, I think right running events is also kind of a good way to communicate doing webinars and and um, moderator meetings and again you can use these info features to get that information out there but uh, you know having a pizza party at class was is what reminded me of that but yes you know putting notice putting something on the board that maybe if we reach um, you know a thousand posts this week uh, we're going to do a, a gaming session or a webinar or something like that it's a great way to do you know, simple messages like that very long way with making your mm -hmm. users very happy mm -hmm. absolutely it's, it's important not to become faceless as a community manager uh, your, your, your community has to have a, its own personality and unless you you use these communication tools then it doesn't have a personality the personality is only that which is derived from the membership which invariably uh goes south very quickly so you have to instill the personality by um by by that this constant messaging and this constant constant engagement to to keep the community ticking over in a healthy fashion so i think up next time we're talking about theming are we not yeah yes yes and i think our guest is going to be well, he's our media director and front end developer he handles a lot of theming for us. And yeah, and that's going to be a fun one. I've been excited for that. Try to bug Ian and see if he'll want to come. But uh, yeah. Yeah, so that'll be that'll be good. I've been using the Zenfro theme system since day one. I think I've mentioned this before. I stayed up all night to make my first Zenfro theme yeah. on <laughs> June 30th, June 29th, or whatever it was. I don't remember, but I fell in love with it. So I think, um, is that going to be our last episode in the season, I think, as well? I think so. Episode, yeah, episode eight. Yep. And what yep. date are we planning that one? Oh, I have to look at a calendar. I think it's July, August fifth, maybe. I would. That have to sounds look about at right. Calendar. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, that'll be fun. Excited for that one. Me too. Lots of stuff time. to talk about on that one. Definitely. Yep. Well, um, thank you guys for chatting. Um, <clears throat> I'll edit this. I'll put it on YouTube. I'll share the link, and we'll see everybody next time. Yep, sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.